What's up guys, this is Ice, and today, due to popular request, I'm going to show you how to set up a Minecraft server. So basically there's two different ways to do this. Um, the first would be to uh, rent one on a server somewhere. Uh, they set it up for you, it runs 100% of the time. You don't have to worry about shutting down your computer, you don't have to worry about you know your router or any of that. It's somewhere else, you connect to it via the IP address and port, um, like, here I'll show you. Let's start up Minecraft really quick. Um, so basically what you're going to do when you connect to a, a server is you're going to add server, name it, and then you know whatever the um, address is. So it'll look something like this with like a port, um, except it'll be longer. It'll probably be like that or something. So that's how you would normally connect, right? So if you go rent one online, you're going to get info like this, you're going to connect, it's going to say like you have five slots or eight slots, so that means you can play with five people or eight people. Um, and that's and that's the way I suggest doing it, is paying for it, but if you don't want to pay for it, um, I'll show you how to set it one up yourself. So, you're going to want to go to minecraft.net and find where, let's see, game, da, 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 download it here. Okay, so you want to get the multiplayer server. So it shows you how to run it. It's kind of a pain. So um, if you're on a, a Mac or uh, you have Linux, you're going to want this right here, this version. And this is just the, the jar, which is just like a Java file. Or if you're on Windows, they have a really nice little executable here for you. Um, maybe I'll show you guys both. So we're downloading that. And when it's done, I think Yeah, let's see. Let's put this on my desktop. Call it Minecraft server because wherever you oops. Wherever you, you start it is where it's going to create all your server files. So you want to make sure that you put this somewhere that in like a folder because otherwise you'll see, you'll see what happens here. Watch. See how it just generates all these files? So this just created a world called world. If you want to change the way that looks, you can go here. Or let me open up Notepad or something that you guys probably have. Um, There you go. Open up my other monitor. Here's Notepad. So if you open this in Notepad, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, if you want to set a, a seed, so like you want the Lonely Island, you would put the seed here. I don't remember what that seed is, but you just paste it here, no spaces, and you have all these different settings. Server IP, don't mess with that. This is the message of the day, which appears underneath uh, the server. See where it says here, or OG Minecraft server. That's this right here. View distance is the longest uh, distance that the server will show, like give blocks to the to the client. Like um, Minecraft doesn't show like infinite distance. It it only shows as far as the settings are. Difficulty. I don't know what these scalers are, but I'm guessing one is normal. I don't know. PvP allows players to hit each other, etc., 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 etc. Right. So oh, here's the server port. So all kinds of good stuff, right? Okay, so this is now on. The server is now on, so which means that on Minecraft, I can go here, and um, I can connect to my local. This is local, so um, it would be. Um, you can probably just type in localhost actually, uh, and it probably will connect. Yeah. So here's my server. As you can see, there's a memory usage jumped up. I'm connected, and that's that. But now, people actually have to be able to connect to you. And how do you, how do you do something like that? Well, in your router settings, you have to set your computer, whatever computer is running it, to be the DMZ. So, what that looks like is 
um, you would go I believe it's here DMZ and then you set the um, you, you click on the client table I don't want to show you all the the different devices on my network um, but you can do it by MAC address which you can find very easily by um, so what I just did was <laughs> I have to explain this I did Windows key R which runs something or you can go to your start menu or if you have Windows 8 uh, you can go to your main menu and just type it but um, Windows key R opens up the run dialog you type in CMD um, and then you could just type in this and this will give you a list of all your um, internet devices uh, adapters I think they call them in Windows and then you can just find what your MAC address is but it's if you have something like this where it says client table it's pretty easy like you know if you named your computer when you when you made it for the first time um, it'll show up there and it'll automatically just put this in here or you can do it by IP address it's whatever but this allows DMZ allows uh, all con all connections that come into to this computer uh, it like bypasses any firewalls it's a demilitarized zone it's essentially open um, for traffic so I can see all traffic that comes in which is important if I'm hosting a Minecraft server right because otherwise people couldn't connect to me so you gotta do this so here the, so he, let's review this step so we went to Minecraft we downloaded the executable or the jar we put it in a folder right here we opened up the properties file which allows us to put different seeds in here oh and also if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to change your the world like if you if you want to keep the world but you want a new one you would just where is it I don't see it in here there's somewhere where you define is that in here yeah I'm, I just missed it I could just change it to world 2 save it um, stop the server you know what? Let's find a lonely island seed. What do what do we use for um, lonely island Minecraft seed? Let's see what we get here. I'll show you guys uh, plugging one in. Here we go. This might not work for the most recent version. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. I'll just show you that this will create a separate world and it's not random. So we go here, open up properties, edit, plug in our level seed, save. And since I changed the name of the world right here, we'll call it Lonely Island actually. This should create a new world because there's no folder here with it when I start this up. Creates a new, see a new folder, it has to create a new level. Starts it on this port, which is just default, I think, for Minecraft. Done. So it took 4.9 seconds for it to create create the world. So when I go back to the same thing, I now have a Lonely Island world. And I think this might be one of the ones the guys played on before. I think it is. And I think by default, can I update my game mode? No, I don't have permission. So we got to go through this too. So if you notice, I don't think there's a way to type. Oh, you can type in commands right here. Okay, cool. I can just type in here op, which is operator, and then my name. And now I'm an operator, it means, which means I can change my game mode and fly run and stuff. So that's important. There's a whole list of Minecraft commands. If you just go to Minecraft commands and... Um, Come on, right here. So here you have the operator commands. So like, clears all effects, difficulty, blah 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 blah. And this is all for vanilla Minecraft only. So like, if I wanted to kick myself, let's see if we can watch this happen. I was kicked. So that's how that works. Now we're gonna do this one more time, but with the jar. So let's go close that. Let's turn off the server. 
create a new one, which is going to call, I'm going to call this Mac or Linux. And we're going to download the jar. Where is it? It's right here. Boom. Okay, so now how do we run this, right? It's a jar. If you double click it, nothing happens, right? Um, you have to go to Windows key R again, type in CMD. Now you have to change directory until you're here. Now this is going to be a little confusing, but if you click here, do you see how it gives me the full path and see how that sort of corresponds to this? Well, you can just do CD and then it's desktop CD, which is change directory. Um, and then if, if it's if there's a space in your folder, you have to do quotation marks Mac or Linux. Now, if I type in dir, which is like shows what's in the directory, we see there's two files. Um, I'm sorry, two directories uh, above it, and then you have the Minecraft server right here. So now, now that we're here, we can go back to this page. See where it says how to run it right here? Copy that, right click, paste. And what these settings are, this is how much memory it starts with. You can change these values. This is a gig of, of memory. RAM, unable to access jar file. Oh, I, I didn't, yeah. I see the, the name's different here. So it's .1.6.2.jar. There. Pops up just like the other one. Generates files just like the other one. And it's good. So now once again, I can start Minecraft and I can join this. By the way, what you're seeing here is Optifine, which I actually do, do suggest. Okay. Go back here and Here's a random world that was just generated. And all the same things work. You know, you still end up with this. So you can run this on a Mac, you can run this on a on Linux, on a PC, it doesn't matter. You can set up your server up on any of these. But remember that I do suggest you hosting it somewhere else. Uh, just because it's so much easier. You don't have to worry about like if I turn off this computer, the server goes down, right? So I have to keep this computer on as long as I want people playing. Uh, and it's also kind of a pain if you have to give out your IP address if people want to connect to you, which you know you might not want to do. But if you really, if you just want to play with some friends or whatever, this is safe. This is a safe way to do it. You got to do what I showed you in here to make sure that um, your your computer is visible. The that when it connects to this port that's defined right here, two five five six five. That, that goes straight through your router to your computer and then it looks at your computer because that's where that's where this is running on your computer not your router right so that's what DMZ does you might have to restart your router afterwards so you would go to like set up and then reboot this this will be different on different routers and all that but uh, you should be it should be just fine you should be able to figure it out uh, it's gonna be called DMZ on every single device that's just the name of the technical name for it um, and you gotta make sure you enable it so you click save and save it I would definitely reboot you don't have to reboot your computer. But that's good. Um, that should be it. So that's how you create a, a local Minecraft server. Um, we use, um, you can see, uh, I think Hex and Big Timer are playing right now. We use a hosting service for this, and then this is going to be the new OpticGaming.tv, which uh, is also a hosting service. So they, they use the same files. You know, this jar right here, they would use the jar, the jar file. And they'd run it, but they'd just be running it on a server, right? It, it'll do the same thing. It won't pop up, uh, pop up with this. It'll pop up without the little interface. It'll just be a, a command line interface here. You'll just be seeing this. Um, and that's it. Uh, if you want to get crazy, you can start doing plugins. You can use Bucket, uh, which is it's a mod, uh, but it's like a, a like a core mod, so that you can then add. So I, I would download this, uh, but I don't want to download it. <laughs> uh, and then you can uh, add plugins to it, which is really, really cool. And they have like a whole list of them here. Uh, let's see what...
kind of fun stuff they'd have. Piston storage. I have no idea what this does. Um, oh, it pushes it into the... Oh, that's really cool. You see that? It pushes the item into the into the chest. So there's random stuff like that. You just add the, uh, the plugins in, and it should pretty much work. It'd be like drag and drop. You know, you, you put it into, like, there's going to be, like, a plugins folder. So it'll be, look like that. And you just put it in there and it'll work. But that's for not it's not for vanilla, that's you need to actually download bucket to do that. So yeah. Those are the two ways to do it. You can do it locally, you can uh, rent a server. I suggest renting a server, but if you really want to try, you can try local. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was informative, and I'll see you next time.